Number 10. The Yard Work Bomb A woman in Missouri got more than she bargained for while doing some yard work. Located in Jefferson County to be exact, Pamela and her husband had moved to Missouri about two years prior. Ever since, they'd been fixing the place up. It was finally time to get the yard looking acceptable. Pamela was in the middle of cleaning when she noticed a large piece of metal sticking out from the dirt. She dug it out, took it inside, and tried to figure out what it was. Pretty soon, she and her husband realized they had a legitimate bomb on their hands. Whoops! She had already dug it out and carried it inside the house. How did it not explode? As you can probably imagine, Pamela and her husband phoned the police immediately. It turned out they had dug up a Japanese mortar from World War II. It became a whole ordeal and Pamela posted on Facebook that her driveway looked like a crime scene since so many officers came to visit the scene. They brought the ordinance out into the driveway. The police had to use a special bomb robot to x-ray the device from a distance. Then an explosive ordnance disposal unit was called in from a nearby Air Force base. They eventually detonated the mortar safely and nobody was injured. Nobody has any idea why a Japanese bomb was buried in the yard. However, police did say the couple was extremely lucky that they found it before excavation started and the bomb had accidentally blown up underneath a piece of big machinery. Number 9. An Aircraft in the Sand On an English beach, a couple stumbled upon the wreckage of a World War II fighter plane that had been lost for 76 years. Amazingly, the plane had been underneath the sand of the beach ever since World War II. According to CNN, the craft is likely a ruined Bristol bow fighter TFX. The Royal Air Force Museum in Britain was able to track down the serial number to confirm that the aircraft had once been part of the 254 Squadron RAF. But just how exactly did it end up on a beach in Lincolnshire? And even more mysterious, why didn't anybody come back for its remains? Here's what happened. The aircraft probably crashed on the day of April 21, 1944. It was soon after the plane took off that both its engines failed. The plane hit the beach, and considering there was a world war on at the time, nobody bothered to go back for it. The people most surprised by the discovery were the two people who found it walking up the beach, seeing as they had strolled the same beach dozens of times before and had never seen the aircraft. It really makes you wonder what other relics are hidden in plain sight, just underneath our feet. The woman said she had no interest in history, but now she wants to learn more about the people who flew in the aircraft. Right now, the authorities have been warned not to look for the wreckage, since it can be dangerous, and that it was already getting covered back up with sand, so they didn't want people to go and get stuck. Number 8. Lost World War II Aircraft Carrier Researchers have finally managed to track down one of the most famous war machines in U.S. history. It's called the USS Hornet, and it was a legendary aircraft carrier from World War II that was sunk during a battle with the Japanese Navy in 1942. It was found deep in the Pacific Ocean, detected using sonar imagery. It's currently sitting 17,500 feet below the surface of the ocean, near to the Solomon Islands. What's really eerie about the aircraft carrier is that it's sitting so far down that there's almost no ocean life on it, despite being sunk for nearly a hundred years. There just isn't that much life down there to turn the ship into its own personal aquarium. Though, of course, there are some strange creatures that call the aircraft carrier home. As for how exactly the Hornet sank, it was during the Battle of Santa Cruz Island. Japanese aircraft bombarded the aircraft carrier until it sank and its crew was forced to abandon ship. 111 sailors lost their lives in the battle. The carrier is most famous for the role it played in the surprise bombing raid on Tokyo back in April of the same year in which it was destroyed when a host of B-25 bombers took off from the ship's deck and rained down fire on the capital city. Number 7. Secret Treasure In the Philippines, there's said to be a legendary treasure hoard known as Yamashita's Gold. As far as the story goes, Yamashita's Gold, which gets its name from the Japanese commander in the Philippines during World War II, is a massive hoard of treasure and valuables buried somewhere on one of the Philippines' hundreds of islands. A massive hoard of loot was collected during the Japanese occupation of Southeast Asia, and Yamashita himself apparently oversaw the burial of the treasure in the Philippines prior to being captured in 1946, tried for war crimes, then executed. But nobody actually knows where the gold is. According to Live Science, that hasn't stopped treasure hunters from spending a small fortune trying to figure out where it is. Just a couple years ago, excavations got so serious that treasure hunters almost caused a landslide in a remote Philippine village. To this day, no trace of the hoard has ever been discovered, and nobody even knows if it's real. Number 6. Rare Photographs A rare collection of photographs from World War II was recently discovered inside a few dusty boxes in somebody's attic. The photographs belonged to the U.S. Army Captain William Klein. After coming home from the war, William put the photos away and forgot about them. It wasn't until 2019 that his son discovered proof of his father's past in the form of the dusty old boxes. He also found military orders along with a letter that William wrote to his parents while fighting on the battlefield. The photos documented William's time spent in Europe during the war, what you might think of as an ancient Instagram story, but in actual physical photographs. The truly remarkable aspect is that William's son had not known these relics were in his very own house for the past 30 years since his father passed away, 
just collecting dust above his head in the attic. He found them completely by accident, and it was nothing short of a whirlwind of absolute emotion for both him and his family, especially since he had never known the full extent of his father's service in the war. Number 5. Bullets and Bone There's a place of horror in Poland known as Death Valley. It's an area where between 1939 and 1945, German death squads executed thousands of people and dumped them into horrifying mass graves. But this area was never really excavated until just recently, and what archaeologists found is truly disturbing. Researchers with the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnology were the ones to make the gruesome discovery. They found fragments of bullets that were probably used to kill completely innocent people. They also discovered the belongings of those who had been wrongfully put to death. These items included a wristwatch, a spoon, and a plate, and even a woman's brooch. But more disturbing than anything were the bodies found in the fragments of skulls, femurs, and the loose teeth, almost all of them uncovered less than a foot under the ground. The recklessness in which these people were buried proves just how savage the Nazis were in Poland during the war. The bullets and shells found around the site have been identified as coming from both Walther PPK and P08 Parabellum pistols, suggesting those who had been executed had been shot in the head at close range. Number 4. Lost Dog Tags Robin McNeil was renovating a customer's home in Australia when he discovered something incredible. He was messing with the mantelpiece over the fireplace when something slipped out of it and clattered to the floor. It was a dog tag, branded with the number NX52255. But the really strange part is that the dog tag had the name A. McNeil stamped into it. It was the same name as the contractor, making it seem like fate had connected Robin with the tag. With permission from the homeowner, Robin took the dog tag down to the Australian War Memorial. They soon launched an investigation to find the owner of the tag. It turned out that a man named Andrew McNeil had served in World War II, was captured as a POW in Singapore back in 1942, survived the ordeal, and eventually made it back to Australia. He then moved into the house that Robin found his dog tag in 70 years later. According to ABC News, the tag was eventually handed over to the soldier's grandchildren, who had always wanted to find out more about their grandfather's service, but had never been given the opportunity. The dog tag will now stay with them for the rest of their days. Number 3. Milk Can Treasures a teenager in northeastern Poland discovered a treasure trove of relics and interesting artifacts from World War II in the strangest of all places. He found the treasures inside of two milk cans. Even weirder, the milk cans were buried next to a lake. Someone had tried to hide what may have been ill-gotten goods, probably hoping to come back for them later. Instead, they'd simply left a time capsule waiting to be discovered 70 years down the road. What kind of stuff was inside the milk cans? According to a report from Live Science, the teenager found an officer's uniform from the Unified Armed Forces of Nazi Germany, a toothbrush, a pocket watch, a whole lot of money, a bunch of coins, and even a diary from 1914 to 1918 during World War I. But the discovery got really crazy after the parents of the teen contacted the authorities and they later identified the relics as belonging to an aristocratic Prussian family who lived near the lake back when the area was part of Germany, known as Prussia. The artifacts were confiscated from the teen and then given over to the daughter of the Count who headed the family during the 40s. The daughter was 81-year-old Waldtraut von Finkenstein, situated across the border in Germany. She was quite pleased to get the artifacts back, though she never did say where exactly they came from or how they got stuffed into milk cans. Number 2. A Hidden Bunker After living in his home for 40 years, a man in England finally discovered a secret hidden underneath his lawn. What he discovered was an air raid shelter from World War II that had likely been built as a hideout for the people in the neighborhood during bombing campaigns by the Germans. The owner of the house is named Kandu Patel, and he's a school caretaker. He had always wondered what the manhole cover in his lawn was for. Then, during the coronavirus pandemic, he got bored and decided to dig it up. Underneath the manhole, Kandu discovered a staircase going down into a shelter that's about 5 feet by 10 feet. It wasn't full of relics and artifacts, but it was still a pretty cool find. Cooler still is that Kondu decided not to waste the space, and so he renovated it and turned it into his very own bar. And to be honest, I think turning the old air raid shelter into a bar is probably the most useful thing he could have done with it. At least he didn't fill it in to get rid of it, or use the underground shelter for boring old storage. Number 1. Ruined F-14 while out for a leisurely hike, a couple of guys stumbled upon the wreckage of an F-14 Tomcat and an F-4 Phantom, two aircrafts used heavily throughout combat up until the early 2000s. The aircraft were discovered inside of an abandoned area in central Texas, and nobody has any idea how they got there. From what everyone can tell, the planes had been scrapped and abandoned, and they'd been sitting in the forest for years. They were found with most of their parts scattered across the area, and experts say they may have once operated at a nearby naval base in Dallas, which closed down in the late 1980s. While most of the unused aircraft were supposed to be taken to a scrapyard, it looks like they may have been dumped in the woods instead to make the job a little easier. 
There's no word yet if these airplanes were ever recovered by the government or if they're still rotting away in the middle of nowhere. Number 10. Bronze Age Treasure Earlier this year, in a forest in western Sweden, near the town of Alingsas, about 30 miles, 48 kilometers northeast of Gothenburg, a man was doing a survey for an orienteering club he was in. It was during this survey that he discovered something amazing completely by accident. He stumbled upon an ancient treasure hoard of Bronze Age artifacts estimated to be at least 2,500 years old. According to the report from the BBC, this guy found at least 50 items, including necklaces and bracelets. His name is Thomas Carlson, and he's a cartographer. He discovered the treasure simply piled together on the floor of the woods next to a bunch of rocks. And according to archaeologists, this was actually pretty standard behavior for ancient tribes. They used to leave offerings in rivers and wetlands, burying precious goods in the soil as gifts to whatever gods they worshipped. It's likely that animals and other natural elements disturbed the earth over time, revealing the hidden artifacts. The cartographer first spotted a metallic glint out of the corner of his eye while working on a map. At first, he thought his eyes just saw some junk sparkling in the bush, but then he realized it was way more than just trash. It was treasure, and it was in surprisingly good condition. It likely belonged to a woman or a woman of a higher status. He immediately sat down, made himself a coffee in the middle of the forest, and emailed a local archaeologist to come and check things out. It turned out the treasure hoard was worth a fortune. Not today, of course, but it would have been worth its weight in gold back in 750 BC. Number 9. Ancient Ring In 2012, in England's Sherwood Forest, a medieval ring was discovered. It was found at Kirton, near what little is left of the legendary forest in Nottinghamshire County, the old stomping grounds of the mythical Robin Hood. The ring dates back to the 15th century and is made of pure sapphire. It has a gold mount engraved with figures depicting the infant of Christ and Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. According to archaeologist Emily Gillett, the ring would have been worn by someone of very high status, such as a visiting bishop. Only someone of extreme wealth could have owned such a precious item, while the peasants of the day would have dreamed of it at night. Kind of like how most of us dream about one day driving a Ferrari or living in a mansion. As for how the ring was discovered, it was thanks to an amateur treasure hunter named Mark Thompson, who had been wandering around with his metal detector for just 20 minutes when he made the amazing find. Mark makes an honest living by spray painting forklift trucks. He said, I was really excited when I saw that it was gold, but I didn't realize at that point just how significant it might be. He also added, it's the find of a lifetime. I never expected to unearth anything like it. I'm still in shock when I think about it. It was such an exhilarating moment. Now, the antique ring is expected to sell for over $25,000. Mark will get to keep half the money, while the other half will be split with the landowner, as those are the rules of found treasure. Number 8. Abandoned Fighter Planes All throughout the ex-Soviet Union, there are abandoned hangars filled with forgotten aircrafts. There are also lost bases with thousands of tanks, jets, and helicopters that are simply rusting away in the middle of the forest. And all this military equipment used to be worth an absolute fortune. For example, near the forgotten Sakhalin Air Base, which today is located literally in the middle of nowhere in the woods, there are MiG-23 fighter jets rotting away to nothing. These amazing war machines used to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to manufacture, and after the war, they were simply thrown away like toys after Christmas morning. These machines have been abandoned for the past 45 years since 1975. Of course, many of them were stripped of their most valuable parts, like their propellers and engines. But still, there's a small fortune in scrap metal slowly turning to rust in the woods of Russia. Number 7. Pablo Escobar's Stash A farmer in Colombia named Jose Mariana Cartolo stumbled upon a rather bizarre discovery after getting a grant from the Colombian government to develop a new palm oil plantation. It was while the farmer was digging in the soil that he discovered a container filled to the brim with cold, hard cash. According to the local reports, there was $600 million in cash inside of what was basically a barrel. And apparently, it had belonged to Pablo Escobar before he died. The notorious Colombian drug lord had amassed a fortune of around $30 billion before being killed and had decided to bury some of it, apparently in some random locations throughout the country. Unfortunately for the farmer, he was caught finding the treasure, and so it was taken by Colombian officials. He probably didn't get to keep a single dollar of it. The money will most likely go to fund social and economic programs. Colombian officials think the discovery will encourage others to search for more of Escobar's billions. Maybe Jose will get lucky and find a second barrel buried somewhere else in the dirt as he continues to grow his plantation. If I found $600 million in cash, I might just disappear. What would you do if you found a barrel of money?
Let me know in the comment section down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Jose Gaspar's Treasure There's no evidence that Jose Gaspar ever actually lived. Nothing about him appeared before the 1900s, and yet he was supposedly born in 1756. He then went on to serve in the Spanish Navy, and he became a counselor to King Charles III. He eventually turned into a pirate, made his base on the coast of Florida, and then raided the Spanish as frequently as he possibly could. He was a buccaneer on the Gulf Coast based in Tampa, and he apparently left behind a treasure somewhere along the Peace River. But nobody's ever actually found the treasure, but there are some who believe it's still out there somewhere in the Florida forest, just waiting to be discovered. In fact, there are crews of people who spend their weekends with machetes and metal detectors patrolling various small islands and searching for the supposed treasure of Jose Gaspar, and it's been going on for over 115 years. Of course, there have been other treasures that are even older than his that have been found, so there's still hope. Even though historians say he was fake, people still believe there's a treasure chest buried in the woods, filled with either pirate gold or Spanish gold, or even Civil War gold. It doesn't matter what kind of gold, so long as it's there. But as of yet, no one has found anything. The treasure hunt continues. Number 5. A Forgotten Safe A farmer discovered a mysterious safe at the edge of a field on his property near the forest. He was surprised because he knew the safe wasn't there before. And as if that weren't mysterious enough on its own, farmer Kirk Mathis claims that there was a note left with it, stating that whoever opened the safe could keep whatever they found inside. This happened in Orleans County, New York. The farmer had actually been out of town when the safe showed up in his field. The safe itself is pretty old, possibly antique. It weighs about 600 pounds, 272 kilograms, and can only be lifted by heavy equipment. As for what hides inside of it, we still don't know. Kirk Mathis told ABC News that he refuses to open it because he thinks the contents should remain a mystery. It almost makes you wonder if the farmer didn't put it on his own property to get some weird attention drawn to him. But even more than that, it really makes you wonder what kind of valuable treasure is in the safe and why someone left it on his property. What do you think the mysterious old safe has inside of it? And who do you think put it on Kirk Mathis' land? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 4. 200 Abandoned Tanks In Russia, for whatever reason, somebody left a whole lot of money sitting in a forest in the middle of the country. Some people wandering through the woods came across 200 abandoned tanks unguarded, no soldiers nearby, and completely unlocked. Footage showed up online of villagers near the city of Yekaterinburg clambering over the vehicles, playing with the ammunition belts, and messing with all the controls. This is some very expensive machinery to leave alone and unlocked in the middle of nowhere. The only things missing were the live rounds and the keys to actually get the tanks started, which is probably a good thing. From what the locals could gather, the tanks were sitting in the forest covered in snow for at least four months. The Russian army was embarrassed after their tanks were discovered, and they never did admit what exactly they were doing just sitting in the woods. A military spokesman said that the tanks were actually being guarded by special patrols and would be dispatched to a military base. An investigation has been opened by military prosecutors. Scared of even more bad publicity, the army started relocating the tanks. The army's just lucky nobody figured out how to hotwire a tank and drive off with all that valuable military equipment. What is Russia up to? Number 3. The Lost City of Gold All throughout Latin America, explorers have been trying to find the Lost City of Gold, also called the White City, for centuries. Supposedly, there's a city filled with gold lost somewhere deep in the Amazon rainforest. But just recently, new images have shown what could be a hidden city lost underneath the Honduran rainforest, far to the north of where the legends say the lost city of gold is. This place could be the buried capital of an unknown civilization. Archaeologists discovered the potential ruins by using special planes that send laser pulses at the ground while they fly over the forest to map its topography. Images revealed an area rich with features that suggest a megalithic city beyond anything previously discovered in Honduras. These features include buildings, agricultural land, canals, and roads. As for how valuable the discovery is, if it's filled with gold, it'll make a small group of explorers very rich. But is it real? People have been looking for the city ever since the 1500s and have never found it. And now, even though archaeologists have now revealed where it could be, it's in such a dangerous location that sending an archaeological team into the area is almost impossible. For hundreds of years, people have died going into the Amazon in search of it, never to come back out. Could this really be it? Number 2. Too Much Treasure Back in 2014, Derek McLennan stumbled upon something amazing. It was a Viking treasure hoard. He was an amateur treasure hunter using a metal detector to just look around for stuff. Instead of boring old crap, he discovered over a hundred items of serious worth on some church woodland in Scotland. It was the largest Viking hoard that was ever found in all of history. 
and all these years after the discovery, the Church of Scotland is trying to sue the guy for over $2 million. At the time Derek discovered the treasure, he claimed he would share the proceeds. He hasn't yet. The National Museum of Scotland paid him around $2 million for the treasure he found, which consisted of dozens of gold artifacts, rings, pins, and bracelets. The great thing about finding things in Scotland is that there's a finder's keepers rule. Whoever finds the treasure gets to keep the payment. This is in stark contrast to other places in the UK where the cash must be split with whomever owns the land. It's doubtful the church will win their suit, but hey, at least they're trying. Do you think Derek will share his treasures? Should he? Number 1. Lost Race Car A nature photographer came across a legendary old race car in the middle of the forest. A race car that was once worth a whole lot of money. The car was once a shiny Pontiac Firebird that raced before 1995. Nobody's exactly sure how the car came to be rotting in the middle of the forest, but it was a real shame for such a valuable piece of equipment to go to waste. Amazingly, the photographer actually managed to find out who raced the car at the track. The driver's name was Bill Balea, and he was from New Brunswick, Canada. He used to race the car at the Cedar Mills International Speedway. The photographer managed to get a hold of the man's daughters, living about halfway across the country. They said the car was one of their father's favorites. They also had no idea how it became lost in the forest or who put it there. There are no plans to restore the car or anything like that despite its worth, and the vehicle will probably stay in the remote Canadian woods until the end of time. Number 10. The Begging Bowl The Begging Bowl was once used by monks in Tibet to appease the angry spirits they believed lingered in the world. The bowl is crafted out of an actual monkey skull and is nothing short of creepy. But it's also allegedly cursed. These same monks would use all kinds of other skulls for their offering plates, and usually they would offer bread, wine, and blood to the enraged demons to drive them away from a holy place. This particular begging bowl, though, the monkey skull, originated in the 1950s and was eventually passed down to a man living in Chicago, with his grandfather apparently feeding the skull blood to try and bring fortune to the family. It was said that if the grandfather ever forgot to feed the begging bowl its daily blood, an angry entity would plague him and cause great harm to the family. Of course, scientists can't explain how the begging bowl actually works. It's essentially just a gilded skull that absorbs blood. But whether or not it can actually drive away demons has never scientifically been proven. Number 9. Ruby the Haunted Doll Ruby the doll was passed down from generation to generation since the early 1900s. She spent many decades sitting alone in attics and basements, with each of her owners too terrified of her to play with her or to keep the doll on display where people could see it. But regardless of where Ruby was kept, she seemed to have a knack for moving between rooms all by herself. Each one of her owners agreed that she was haunted by some kind of ghost. Whenever Ruby was picked up, the simple touch of her porcelain skin would immediately make whoever touched her feel an intense wave of sadness and sometimes be stricken by nausea. But where did the doll come from? She allegedly once belonged to a young girl who passed away while gripping the doll in her arms. Some believe it's the young girl's spirit that still haunts the doll to this very day. Ruby was eventually donated to the care of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, where she was put on display. Hundreds of visitors to the museum have held the doll in their own hands and almost everybody exhibits a sudden rush of depression and great sadness, right before giving the doll back and never wanting to touch her again. Are you curious enough to hold Ruby? Number 8. Ghost Mine Drill in Oregon, there's a haunted place called Crescent Mine. Those who worked inside the mine often reported encountering strange paranormal phenomena, often having to do with ghosts and apparitions. It was during a paranormal investigation show called Ghost Mine when Patrick H.T. Doyle was trying to communicate with ghosts inside the long-since abandoned mine when he came up with something strange. He wrote of his account, I sat on the pile of rubble and stared back down the dark drift. As I spoke out loud at the old miner who might have lost his life there, asking questions like, did you die here? and what were you doing when you died? My foot slipped off the rock it was resting on and plunged into the thick orange mine muck along the mine wall. I felt something under my foot, so I reached down up to my elbow in the muck and pulled out this drill. The tool had been stuck inside the mine for over a hundred years. Nobody knows who exactly owned the drill or if it was involved with any kind of violent death, but it does appear to be cursed. The drill now sits on Patrick's shelf next to a half dozen other haunting items that seem to move on their own. He said he's come home to find the drill moved out of place, on the floor, and even on a different shelf. Oddly enough, the ghost mine drill seems to attract women. It could have something to do with the old mining superstition that women were never allowed in a mine because it was considered bad luck. Such bad luck that a single woman entering a mine could cause it to collapse. Women who got near the old mining drill have reported feeling a bizarre attraction to the mysterious object. Nobody can explain why this happens. All we know is that it does. Number 7. The Anguished Man a painting known only as the Anguished Man has been the cause of unexplained paranormal activity. The painting is currently in the home of Sean Robinson, a resident of England. 
When he was a kid, Sean saw the strange oil painting in the home of his grandmother, hidden under curtains in the cellar of her old house. According to Sean himself, he felt greatly drawn to the painting as if by a mysterious force. He would spend time alone with the painting and stare at it for hours on end. When his grandmother eventually passed away, the painting was left to Sean. Fast forward a few years and Sean has a family of his own. He eventually brought the painting into his house. This resulted in many arguments between him and his wife. But the painting was hung on the wall anyway. This ended up being a huge mistake because an unknown spirit caused unwanted paranormal activity inside their house. Doors began bursting open in the middle of the night, screams were heard emanating from nowhere, and the entire family reported experiencing nightmares almost every single night. Apparently, the painter who originally created the anguished man had used his own blood mixed with oil paint to produce this horrifying image. This has never been verified, but that's allegedly what happened. And of course, scientists have no explanation for how a painting could cause such turmoil. It's not scientifically explainable. What would you do if a creepy painting like this was passed down to you? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 6. The Catskills Crone a strange and mysterious idol was discovered by a couple of hikers while trekking off the beaten path in the Catskill Mountains in New York State. The hikers found a small statue inside the mouth of a cave. The statue appeared to have been carved by hand. It had six rusty nails sticking in its head, with three nails driven into each eye. There was also an old length of rope tied around the idol's neck like a noose. As you can probably imagine, the hikers were pretty terrified of the discovery. It looked like they'd found some kind of totem used in a satanic ritual. Even though it didn't seem like the best idea, the explorers took the figurine away with them. This was the beginning of their nightmare. Only days after taking the strange idol home, muddy footprints began to appear throughout their house. The house also began to stink like pond water. It was a week after they took the idol with them that they finally saw the apparition of an emaciated old crone hunched over in the darkness. The hikers quickly realized it was time to get rid of the haunted artifact. Number 5. The Conjuring Crystal the Conjuring Crystal once belonged to a psychic in Mississippi who claimed that she could see the future thanks to her spirit guide, a man whom she regularly conjured inside of the crystal. But it wasn't until she had used the crystal for several years as a fortune teller that she realized something was wrong. She soon became convinced that her spirit guide was actually the devil. In response, she tried to dispose of the crystal. At least, that's what her family thought. It was after this woman's funeral that her son discovered the conjuring crystal hidden amongst her belongings. Apparently, the crystal was harder to get rid of than anticipated. The son then tried a bit of divination himself. But when he tried, all hell broke loose. Doors started slamming, lights started flickering, and he had an overwhelming sense that his mother was in the room with him, warning him not to mess with the conjuring crystal. Since then, nobody has used this dangerous crystal to try looking into the future. Number 4. The Idol of Nightmares The Idol of Nightmares is a cursed voodoo statue that allegedly causes bad dreams for anyone who dares to touch it. No scientist in the world can explain how touching a simple idol can cause nightmares, and yet it does all the same. The idol was first discovered by a man named Tim after purchasing a house near Dayton, Ohio. It was as Tim explored the crawl space underneath the house that he found a burlap sack bound with baling twine. The sack appeared to have been there for quite some time. At first, it looked almost like a body wrapped up with the wire. But when Tim took the object upstairs and unwrapped it, he discovered a statue that would haunt him for the rest of his life. The statue was about two feet, made to resemble a man with strange triangular symbols on his forehead. Tim thought the idol looked kind of African, though there was no possible way to identify its origins. Nobody in the house liked the idol. They all thought it was terrifying, and when they went to sleep, they all began to have nightmares. The nightmares went on even after Tim put the statue back in the basement. Then there was extreme paranormal activity going on in the house, like doors being slammed and silverware exploding out of drawers. In a final effort to save himself and his family from the idol, Tim handed it over to a museum that dealt with similar oddities. He told those at the museum, I don't care what you do with it, put it in your museum, burn it, whatever. He's your problem now, and he's never looked back. Number 3. The Amityville Artifact The Amityville Artifact is just as terrifying as it sounds. We're all at least vaguely familiar with the Amityville Horror. It was one of the most mysterious and ghostly murders that ever happened in America. On November 13, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. killed all six members of his family in the house where they lived in Amityville, New York. Each member of his family was shot with a 35 caliber rifle while they slept innocently in their beds. One month after the incident, George and Kathy Lutz moved into the house. They then experienced a haunting like no other, with green slime oozing from the cracks in the walls, random bite marks manifesting on their skin, and straight-up demonic manifestations. Within just one month, the family fled. There's a small piece of wood known as the Amityville artifact, only about a foot. It seems to have retained some of the ghostly energy from the house. It was taken from the most haunted building in America and discarded as a piece of trash during a modern renovation. Someone scooped the piece of wood and took it with them, and wherever it's traveled, paranormal activity has followed. Number 2. The Restless Painting 
The Restless painting is definitely the most disturbing painting you've ever seen in your life. It depicts a young girl and her cat. It once hung on the wall of a shop that sold odds and ends. According to the owner of that shop, nobody would ever purchase the creepy painting. But in the years that it hung on the wall, the owner noticed that it had a strange habit of throwing itself off the wall and landing on the floor. Not only that, but it would sometimes rattle violently before slipping from the wall and hitting the floor. There's never been any scientific evidence for why the painting is so restless. Nobody even knows who made the painting in the first place, but it's definitely creepy, there's no doubt about that. But other than a bit of rattling and a lot of overly aggressive behavior for a painting, it hasn't actually caused anyone harm. Nobody knows if this thing is haunted, or cursed, or maybe both. Number 1. The Conjuring Drum the conjuring drum was once owned by a family from the Detroit area that practiced voodoo. They used this small ritualistic drum to summon a spirit for personal gain. Because the spirit had such overbearing energy, the drums could only be used for a brief time before they had to be disposed of. This is because if the drums were not destroyed, they'd begin summoning the spirit themselves. The family often wrapped their conjuring drums in chains and then sunk them to the bottom of the nearest available river. But in the case of this particular drum, it was apparently abandoned at a magic shop in Detroit wrapped in a white cloth. The family then abandoned it after an undisclosed incident that scared the pants off them. The magic shop donated the haunted drum to John E. L. Tenney, a paranormal researcher. It hasn't summoned any spirits lately from what we know, but maybe it's just waiting for the right moment. Thanks for watching. Would you dare to take any of these haunted artifacts home with you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time right here on American Eye.